We all know our basic animals. You got your cow, your snake, your billy goat, and your giant man-eating sloth. Okay, well, maybe the last one isn't 100% proven to exist, but you still kind of knew what it was, right? Well, forget about these regular old animals, because today, we're gonna take a look at the most weird and wonderful critters out there. From the seal that wears a hoodie, to the warty lump of frog and fish, here's the 20 strangest animals that are hard to believe are real. <sighs> Number 20. Hooded Seals just by looking at him, you can tell that a male hooded seal is a real seal deal. He's a great swimmer, but clumsy on the ice floors because of his blubbery cylindrical body, flippers, and tail. The skin on top of a hooded seal's head can swell to the size of two football fields if he's about to dive, or if he's trying to make an impression on a rival or seduce a female. A second red balloon also emerges from his nose when he plugs one nostril and fills the other with air. These weird balloons on the animal's head and nose can make sounds to scare off competitors and potential predators and entice potential mates. Biologists have always been curious about the hood and red nose of the male hooded seal. The seal's nose has a bladder-like cavity that causes these growths to appear. Oh god, what an awful grade school nickname, bladder nose, can you imagine it? Uninflated, the seal's bladder droops over its mouth. If he blows it up, it'll make his head look almost twice as big as it actually is, which is meant to scare off enemies and win over the female favor. When the seal inflates the hood halfway, the septum in their left nasal cavity stretches and eventually puffs up like a red balloon. These balloons can be heard from land and sea when the seal shakes them, making a whooshing and pinging sound. And thank god no one's asking me to do an imitation of them. It looked like a normal animal until someone got close to it. Then they say, how odd is this? Before we go on, like this video, smash that subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Number 19, Warty Frogfish. The warty frogfish, also called the clown frogfish, is small enough to fit in the palm of your hand, and it's even got its own set of fins. Oh, such a cute little warty clowny hunk of love. And what's crazy is, it can walk. Pectoral fins are a pair of fins located behind a fish's head. The pectoral fins of fish are the evolutionary ancestors of the shoulders, arms, and hands of humans. Therefore, thinking about human pecs will help you understand where these fins are positioned. Frogfish have transformed their pectoral fins into arm-like, uh, arms that enable them to move through the reef rocks, sponges, and coral. Once in place, warty frogfish blend into the vibrant coral backdrop with their brilliant array of warts, bumps, and abstract color patterns. which makes it difficult for their prey to see them. Frogfish are a kind of anglerfish that got their name thanks to a spine on their fins that's been adapted to serve as a fishing rod and bait. Number 18, Umbonia spinosa. The official name for this rare creature sounds like one of Harry Potter's spells, but people also call it a tree hopper or a thorn bug. Go on, say Umbonia spinosa three times and see what happens. Scientists don't know much about this delightfully strange bug because there hasn't been a lot of in-depth research on it, but they think that it's related to the cicada. Other thorn bugs look like they're made of thorns, but this one has a strange helmet that looks more like a fashion statement than a good way to hide. Like other bugs, they use use their sharp mouth parts to pierce plants and stems and drink the sap inside of them. Because they like to eat sweet things like aphids, they make something called honeydew, which is sugary poop that ants love to eat. I'm sorry to tell you that pretty gross news, and I'm even more sorry to make you think of that melon again, so that next time you eat it, you'll think of bug poop. Because of this special meal, the ants are very protective of their tree hoppers, and they'll attack you if you threaten one. They're kind of like tree hopper bodyguards, except they eat the poop of the guys they protect. Umbonia spinosa has been found in Mexico, southern Florida, and south and central America. One more for the road. Honeydew equals bug poo. Number 17. Saiga antelope. 
The Saiga lives on the dusty steppes of that stretch across Kazakhstan, Russia, and Uzbekistan. It moves through these areas, but it used to live in a much bigger area and in a lot more places. It's now listed as critically endangered, so it seems likely that we won't see this strange looking antelope for much longer. The Saiga is easy to recognize because it has a big head with large nostrils that face down. This setup evolved to help the Saiga breathe in its dusty environment. In the winter, it also warms the air a little bit before it goes into the lungs, making it safer to breathe. The males also have pretty cool thorns that are waxy and almost see-through and have 12 to 20 rings on them. Wolves like to eat them and fox, steppe eagles, golden eagles, dogs, and ravens can eat the young ones. Being an animal that's popular in Chinese medicine has been the worst news for the saiga. Chinese people killed off their own population, but now saiga horns are in high demand from other countries. In the 1920s, the species almost went extinct, but hunting was controlled by the USSR. In the 1990s, Russia got rid of all hunting restrictions, and the saiga almost went extinct again. More recently, conservation projects have started in Russia. However, the animal is almost extinct again due to not enforcing the laws and poaching in Kazakhstan and the spread of disease. Number 16. Atreidacoana iselti, or penis snake. Brazilian engineers were building a dam on the Amazon River when they found a new species in the Caecilian family, which includes snakes, worms, and other animals. In fact, many people said it kind of looked like a big blind earthworm, but a lot of other people said it like it really is. It looks like a penis. Yes, we want to tell you about the penis snake, which is Kinda hilarious, you gotta admit, right? Six of these snakes were found in the Madeira River, which is one of the major rivers that feed into the Amazon. A biologist thought it was a new species, so he gave it the name Atreidacoana iselti. But only the biologists call it that. The rest of us will always call it a penis snake, and there's nothing that you can do to stop us. They actually grow to be about 32 inches long, which is a pretty big penis, you gotta admit. More like a manaconda if you ask me. Number 15. Leafy Sea Dragon The leafy sea dragon is the only marine fish in the family Cynegathidae, which also includes sea dragons, pipefish, and seahorses. It's in the genus Phycodorus. It can be found on beaches in the south and west of Australia. The name comes from the way that it looks with long, leaf-like parts sticking out in all directions from the body. These protrusions are only used for hiding, not to move. The leafy sea dragon's dorsal and pectoral fins, which are near the end of its tail, help it move forward. These tiny fins, which are almost completely clear and can totally be hidden. move the organism slowly through the water. This makes it look like floating seaweed, which is a great way to hide. It's the symbol of the sea for the state of South Australia, and it's also a key area for marine conservation in the region. The locals call them leafies. In South Australia, the Yankalilla District Council is home to the Leafy Sea Dragon Festival, which is held every year. It's a celebration of the ecology, arts, and culture of the Fleurieu Peninsula, with its leafy sea dragon as the main focus. In 2005, more than 7,000 people went to the first festival. Number 14. Lilac Breasted Roller Kenya has more than 1,000 kinds of birds, including herons, storks, weavers, and sparrows. But there's one bird that's without a doubt a national treasure in Kenya. In fact, many Kenyans think of this bird as a symbol of their country. The lilac-breasted roller is that bird. The roller is probably the only bird in Kenya that makes people excited as much as when they see it as they would be to see a lion or a cheetah. The lilac-breasted roller is the national bird of Kenya because its feathers come in so many different colors. It has about eight colors in total, green, white, black, yellow, turquoise, dark blue, reddish brown, and lilac. The colors are meant to show that Kenya's people come from many different tribes. It's a beautiful way to say that Kenya has a lot of different kinds of people. The Swahili word for this bird is kambu. The English name is lilac-breasted roller, and it's a lot harder to say than the Swahili name. 
The fact that the bird has two subspecies is also interesting. The lilac-breasted roller is one of them. The other one is called the lilac-throated roller, or sometimes the blue-breasted roller. The main thing that a lilac-breasted roller eats are spiders, scorpions, centipedes, millipedes, and snails. So, yeah, they eat a lot of gnarly stuff. People have seen these birds hang out on farmland that's just been burned. They do this to look for insects that have been pushed out of the undergrowth by fire. This bird is known for not being afraid of anything. They're not afraid of people like many other birds are. One of the ways that they hunt also shows that they are indeed fearless. They swoop down on their prey, and if it's too big to eat in one piece, they smash it up with their wings until it's small enough to eat. Number 13. Sea Pig Sea pigs live in the deep sea, but you probably won't ever see one. As their name suggests, they look like pink gummy pigs, but they don't have eyes, they got a lot more legs than pigs, and are almost completely translucent. The elusive sea creatures, which are also called scotoplanes, are types of echinoderms. Sea urchins and starfish are also echinoderms. Even though sea pigs are secretive and strange, they deserve a lot of praise for how important they are to the ocean ecosystem. As I mentioned earlier, even though sea pigs are very common, you probably won't ever see one in person. Coldest and deepest parts of the ocean, up to four miles below the surface. Because they like to hide in the abyss, this species is notoriously hard to find. The main reason that you'll never get to see these strange, almost transparent creatures on land is that they can't be taken out of their natural environment. Their small, fragile bodies would turn into a pile of blobby jello if they were brought within 4,000 feet feet of the surface of water. And three, if they get caught in a fishing trawler, they'll just disintegrate. Because sea pigs are so hard to study, there's still a lot to learn about them. Number 12. Satanic Leaf-Tailed Gecko now let's take a look at the satanic leaf-tailed gecko, which is also the best name and also the most beautiful animal in Madagascar. That's really what it's called, and you can bet the gecko is proud of it. But names aside, this little lizard is a great example of how natural selection works. It has a leafy tail with missing pieces that look like they've rotted away. Only in Madagascar can you find these geckos, and they only come out at night to hunt. People think they mostly eat insects, but not that much is known about what they eat in the wild. Satanic leaf-tailed geckos, on the other hand, eat almost anything they can catch in captivity, including crickets, flies, spiders, cockroaches, and snails. But really, the best thing for them to do is just not be seen at all, and that's where their amazing ability to blend in really shines. The gecko's whole body, including its tail, looks like a dead leaf. The satanic leaf-tailed gecko's behavior helps them blend in with their surroundings. They spend the day hanging around still from branches or snuggling among dead leaves, often with their leafy tails wrapped around their bodies. Number 11. Pink Fairy Armadillo the pink fairy armadillo looks pretty big, but it only gets to be about 6 inches long. This species of armadillo can only be found in central Argentina. It's the smallest in the whole world. Pink fairy armadillos have a shell like other armadillos, but it's softer, thinner, and more flexible, and it only covers about half of their bodies. The blood vessels are close to the surface of the shell and give it that pink color. Armadillos have really low body temperatures and slow metabolisms, so their exterior covering helps them stay warm, too. Pink fairy armadillos are hard to find and rarely seen because they're active at night and spend most of their time underground digging. Because of this, not much is known about their behavior and biology. Because they're hard to find and can't live anywhere else, they're hard to study. The nickname Sand Swimmer comes from the idea that they can move as quickly underground as a fish can in water. It has two big claws on each of its front and back legs, which help it dig through the ground quickly. Even though there's no natural threats to this species, cats Cats and dogs, which are kept as pets, could hurt them. Wild boars will also sometimes try to eat them. Number 10. Holotrephus jelly. The firework jellyfish, or Halotrephus massi, is a deep water hydrozoan called Halicratidae. 
It's often called the firework jellyfish on the internet because of the amazing colors. The jelly is found between 4,000 and 5,000 feet deep in the ocean near Baja California Peninsula in Mexico. Even though there isn't much known about this species, research shows that it may live in different kinds of water. The hydrozoan has been found in the Atlantic, Indo-Pacific, Antarctic, Mediterranean, and Eastern Pacific Oceans. It lives in both temperate and tropical seas. This hydromedusae lives in a place called bathypelagic. The bathal zone, also called the bathypelagic zone, is part of the open ocean that's between 3,300 and 13,100 feet deep. It's in the middle of the mesopelagic and abysmopelagic. Around 39 degrees Fahrenheit is the average temperature, so it's not exactly comfortable down there. The baffle zone is bigger than the photic zone, but it has fewer animals living in it. There's no known phytoplankton or aqua plants in this zone because there isn't enough light for photosynthesis to happen. Because of this, it's sometimes called the twilight or dark zone, or the midnight zone. Sounds like a show with creepy videos that Riker from next generation hosts. Number 9. Okapi. The okapi is called the forest giraffe, but it looks more like a deer and a zebra that have crossed. Still, it's in fact the only living relative of the giraffe. The only place that the okapi lives in the wild is the Ituri rainforest in the Democratic Republic of Congo. Its thick, oily fur helps it stay dry when it rains. It also has scent glands on the bottom of its hooves to help it mark its territory. The okapi's short horns are skinned all over except for the tips. Most females don't have horns, but instead they have knobby bumps. The okapi lives in the rainforest where there's lots of plants. It can hide in plain sight because the brown and white stripes on its back look like streaks of sunlight coming down through the trees. They're active during the day and prefer to be alone. It makes sticky markings on its territory with its hooves, and males spray their territory with urine. But sometimes okapis get together in small groups to eat, clean themselves, and even play. The Okapi Conservation Project was started in 1987, and it's still going strong, even though bloodthirsty poachers attacked the headquarters in 2012 and 2017, killing many volunteers and okapi. It helps fund the Okapi Wildlife Reserve in the Ituri Forest, which is a world heritage Heritage site and home to 5,000 okapis. Number 8. Maned Wolf I'm gonna start off with the big question. Have you ever wondered why maned wolf pee smells like marijuana? Have you ever asked yourself this question? No? So it's a good thing that some scientists were eager to find out why so you don't have to. These large South American canids called maned wolves look like leggy foxes, but they're neither foxes nor wolves. Their urine smells like hops or cannabis and is very strong. The smells are so similar that police were once sent to the Rotterdam Zoo in the Netherlands to look for a pot smoker. When they got there, they found that the person who made the report had been fooled by the smell of the maned wolf urine. Also, what a narc! Aren't people supposed to be cool about this sort of thing in the Netherlands? Anyway, as with other dogs, pee is an important part of a maned wolf's communicative repertoire. A maned wolf's urine or poop can tell you a lot about it if it's dropped in the right place. Their urine has a very strong smell smell, which might be a way for them to mark their territory by being strong enough to be smelled from long away or long after the scent was first left. Maned wolf urine is unique among carnivorans in having high levels of 2.5-dimethylpryzine, an organic compound belonging to a group used in scent and chemical communication by many organisms, and simply called pryazines. Pryazines are curious because they often create strong odors that act as warnings. The peculiar marijuana smoke smell of the canids urine is an oil factory keep out sign. So if you go to a zoo that has maned wolves, why not stop and smell the wolf pee? <sighs> Number 7. Golden Tortoise Beetle the larvae of the golden tortoise beetle have a back part called an anal fork that can hang over them like an awning. Depending on the species, they'll put their waist or old exoskeletons on this surface. This fecal shield keeps predators away. The larvae are alert and move quickly when they sense danger. When a predator comes close, the larvae of a golden tortoise beetle form a circle to protect themselves, like a herd of bison in a ring, except with poop all over their backs.
The bugs stand up with their heads in the middle and their tails sticking out. They can move their bodies at the same time and wave their shields at the enemy. Like baby bison, baby beetles stay in the middle of the ring, and if one gets lost, the mother will bring it back. What a cute little bug, apart from the whole poop shield thing, of course. The golden tortoise beetle lives all over the eastern part of North America, from about Iowa to Texas in the west. It's one of three kinds of tortoise beetles that live in Florida. Number 6. Mantis Shrimp Stomatopods are predatory marine crustaceans that are sometimes called mantis shrimp. They evolved from other Malacostrica species about 340 million years ago. The average length for a mantis shrimp is about 3.9 inches, but some can grow up to 15 inches long. There's more than 450 different kinds of mantis shrimp. Their colors range from dull to bright. In many shallow, tropical, and subtropical marine environments, they're some of the most important predators. Even though they have a wide range, many species spend most of their lives underground, which makes them hard to study. Mantis shrimps use their strong raptorials to spear, stun, or cut up the animals they eat. Some species of mantis shrimp have calcified clubs that can hit with a lot of force, while other species have pointed forelimbs that can grab food. Mantis shrimps live for a long time, and they take part in complicated activities like ritualized warfare. Some animals use fluorescent patterns on their bodies to talk to each other, and maybe even to animals of other species, and this adds to their range of ways to communicate. They have great learning and memory skills, and they can remember neighbors with whom they communicate often. They can tell who they are by what they see and even what they smell. Many have made up complicated social rules to protect their territory from other shrimp. Number 5. Shoebill did you know that birds are the direct descendants of dinosaurs? It's true, and the birds are a living link to a planet that went extinct 65 million years ago, or depending on how you look at it, when Jurassic Park 3 came out. The first Jurassic Park movie may have been wrong when it showed T-Rex and Velociraptors as having scales. In fact, they might have had feathers, just like birds do, and their bones were hollow and not very dense, which not only helped them grow so big, but also gave them the material needed to fly. Also, this might be hard to believe if you look at a local pigeon, but if you look at a shoebill, you can see right away how close that it is to dinosaurs. These huge birds live in Uganda and the areas around it. Their faces look like shoes, if you wear really, really weird and ugly shoes, that is. People used to think that they were storks, but they're actually in the same family as pelicans. Any way that you look at it, this huge dinosaur bird looks strange. But despite their appearance, they're very chill birds and no threat to humans, in spite of all that T-Rex DNA living inside of them. Number 4. Goblin Shark A goblin shark is swimming in the deep sea when it sees a small squid that looks like it would taste pretty good. The hunter moves a little closer to the animal it wants to eat. The snack starts to run away as the fish gets closer, so the shark's lower jaw sticks out three inches more. Then the predator bites the squid. When the shark's done eating, it closes its mouth and swims away. This is a pretty awesome hunting technique. Goblin sharks are a kind of fish that lives at the bottom of the ocean, along the edges of continents, which are called continental shelves. The pink animal can grow to be as long as 12 feet and as heavy as 460 pounds. Their faces are small and their teeth are sharp. Their name comes from the fact that they look like goblins from Japanese folklore. Because scientists don't see these animals very often, they don't know much about how they act. But they think that, like most other sharks, goblin sharks live alone. They also think these fish are most active in the morning and evening. These animals are probably slow, which makes it hard for them to catch food. These slowpokes are lucky that their jaws can be stretched, which gives them a little bit more bite. Number 3. Sri Lanka Frogmouth the Sri Lankan frogmouth is a pretty accurate name for these beautiful birds. They live mostly in Sri Lanka and have wide, flat bills and heads that are as wide as their bodies, making them look like frogs. But that's not the only cool thing about these guys. They grow to be about 10 inches long, and their wings are small compared to other birds of the same genus, Batrachostomus. <laughs> 
Male and female frog mouths don't look exactly the same. In general, their feathers are gray-brown, but the males are more gray-brown and the females are more chestnut-brown. Their feathers also look different based on where they come from. Females from India often have black spots on their heads, but Sri Lankan females don't have these spots as clearly, or sometimes they just don't have them at all. You may have also noticed their eyes. The short, stiff bristles in front of and around their eyes remind me of a wise-looking cartoon owl or someone with an unkept unibrow and too much mascara. Most frog mouths live in tropical forests with thick undergrowth, but they tend to be hard to find because their feathers help them blend in and they only come out at night. But they usually stay in the same place for a few months at a time. Like most birds, they usually eat insects where they catch them in the air or they get them from the ground in trees. Number 2. Long Waddled Umbrella Bird the umbrella bird is a large tropical bird that lives in the rainforests of South and Central America. There's three kinds of umbrella birds. The long waddled umbrella bird, the Amazonian umbrella bird, and the bare necked umbrella bird. They all live in slightly different places, but all three species pretty much look the same. They have a crest on top of their heads that looks like an umbrella, which is how they got their names, and an inflatable pouch in the shape of a pendant on their throats. The umbrella bird lives in the subtropical belt of Central in South America. It spends most of its time high up in the tree canopy, hopping from branch to branch. The umbrella bird is usually a solitary animal, but it has been seen living in the same area as other birds, including other umbrella birds and similar species like woodpeckers. The umbrella bird can fly short distances, but it moves slowly and clumsily in the air. The umbrella bird is a very important part of the ecosystem where it lives because it spreads the seeds from the fruits that it eats all over the forest. Monkeys, snakes, and large birds of prey like hawks and eagles are the main things that eat umbrella birds. All three species are in danger, mostly because large parts of their natural habitats have been destroyed, and most of the remaining populations are now in protected areas. Number 1. Silky Chicken the silky is a bantam that's known for being extra small. It weighs between just 1.5 and 3.5 pounds. It gets its name from the unique fluffy tuft that grows from the top of its head, and it feels more like silk than feathers. People call these chickens the poodles of the chicken world because of how strange they look. Back in the 1200s, they first came to the west from Southeast Asia. When famous explorer and jerkwad Marco Polo first went to the area, he saw a small black chicken with feathers that looked like fur. This could only have been the silky. The silky eventually made its way to North America, where it was accepted by our friends at the Standard of Perfection in 1874. There are three accepted colors, black, blue, buff, white, partridge, splash, and gray. But these chickens can also be red, lavender, porcelain, and cuckoo, which aren't official colors. Did you know that the color cuckoo exists? Well, now you do. The soft little chickens are used as decoration and their fur feels just like angora wool. Someone might make the first silky fur sweater one day. Which of these animals did you find the most amazing? Have you ever spotted a weird animal? Let us know in the comments below. Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on screen right now. See you next time.